I tap my pocket where my phone was. My phone is gone. I lost my phone in the sex club. <laughs> How am I gonna find my phone? Buenos dias, mi amigos, and welcome back to the channel. So a few years ago, I traveled to Spain and I was in Madrid and I really immersed myself in the culture and the men and the food. I'm here to talk about one of the places that I visited while I was there in Madrid, not about the men per se. Of course, if you do wanna hear about my experiences with the men at this place in Madrid, you can go to my OnlyFans page. The link is in the description below. Okay, so after a few days of exploring the city during the day and doing like more daytime stuff, it was time to explore the nightlife. Now, being the experienced cruiser that I am, I slipped into a sexy t-shirt, a jockstrap, some jogging pants for easy access, and I headed out into the night. So let's start with the location of Boyberry. Boyberry's location is perfect. It's a stone's throw away from Shweka, is the neighborhood in Madrid, which is perfect, and it's right off of La Gran Via, which is like the, the main artery of Madrid. Because of its location, it's completely accessible if you need to get there by car, by Uber, public transportation, bicycle, pogo stick, roller skates, parachute. And as for the hours of operation of Boyberry, it's open long enough that you can enjoy the space, but it's also closed long enough that they can really give it a good scrub down because I can only imagine what a place like this looks like once everybody leaves and they flick on all the lights. So weekdays, they're open from noon to 3 a.m. and then weekends, they're open 3 p.m. to 3 or 3.30 a.m. So plenty of time to enjoy yourself. And you know what's always open? Not that, get your mind out of the gutters. I was gonna say my inbox on my Patreon page where a message is guaranteed a response. Patrons of my channel get perks like advanced access to episodes, behind the scenes content, personalized videos, and more. You can find everything Patreon at patrickmorano.com. And I need to give a huge shout out to my newest patrons, Kaylin, James, Thomas, Shane, and Joseph. Welcome guys. Okay, back to Boyberry. To be clear, Boyberry is not a sauna, okay? Boyberry does not have showers, there's no steam room, there's no jacuzzi. You basically take out all of the wet areas that you would find in a sauna, and what you're left with are like the dark zones, um, the mazes, the benches, the glory holes, and all that, and that pretty much sums up what Boyberry is. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. So I walk in, and there's a bar, and I go up to the bartender, which is what he was, he was serving drinks, and super friendly. As soon as I open my mouth, he's like, okay, this guy's a total gringo, he's not from here. He's patient with me, he explained to me the place and how it works, he was very welcoming. He even suggested like certain drinks to try. I went, immediately I went from feeling out of place to feeling like, okay, this person is gonna take care of me. So the staff that I encountered were super friendly. So admission basically is buying at least one drink. It touts itself as a bar um, and there is seating and you can buy drink. I guess technically <laughs> you could actually go to Boyberry and just order drinks with your friends and hang out at the bar area. The bar area is just the entrance slash entrance fee area to get into the back part, which is really the purpose of Boyberry. So I order my drink and I'm just sitting at the bar and I'm taking in the environment. There's music playing, but like I said, it wasn't very busy in the bar area. So I was a little bit concerned that this place was going to be a bust. As I'm sipping my drink, I'm looking around the room and I'm just getting my bearings. I noticed that more on one side, there's a display case. So I go to check out like what's in the display case, all sex things. So there's like dildos, there's recognizable faces on the packaging of dildos, uh, different sex toys that you can purchase. Sex, 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 sex. It's like a sex <laughs> display case. But then I'm thinking, okay, well, where are the people? So I finish my drink and then I notice that there's uh, another entrance, but it's on the other side of the bar, there's an entrance and it's leading into another area. So I make my way through and then it gets much darker, obviously. And on the main floor, which is not very big on the main floor, they have some rooms, a little mazy. Everything is just very dark. There's people milling about. Everybody is fully clothed. Some people have their pants down. Some people have their pants open. Some people have their shirts off. There's little areas to play, little places to duck into, and you can do things. Very exhibitionist, very voyeuristic. But I see that there's stairs that go down. 
So I'm thinking, Patrick, <laughs> don't waste it now. You just walked in. Don't waste it on this main floor experience. There's a lot more to discover. I could tell by looking down this kind of dark, kind of sketchy staircase, which of course attracts me immediately. If it's dark and sketchy looking, I'm there. So the downstairs is really quite sizable. You've got this sort of like main room, which is kind of open, which I appreciated because you want to get your bearings first. You see benches, it's dark, but you can still see, which is nice. There's a lot more people downstairs than there were upstairs. Noticing that there's little pathways. It's a little, a little bit mazy. So at one point I'm walking around downstairs and every so often I check my pockets. I'm just kind of anal that way, like keys, wallet, phone. Where's my phone? I always put my phone in the same pocket and it's not there. It's like, it's so dark in there. It's full of people milling about. If I drop my phone somewhere, probably somebody took it or if it's on the ground, who's gonna know whose it is? Who's gonna return it? Who's gonna see it? Who's gonna know it was mine? And the reason it fell out was because I was wearing those jogging pants that for easy access. The problem with these jogging pants are they have really shallow pockets. So I try to retrace my steps, which is super hard because this place is kind of like a maze. I'm crawling on the floor looking for my phone. I must have looked really sketchy at this point, but I was desperate, right? And the floor, you. <laughs> God, the last thing you want to do is be feeling around the floor in a cruising sex bar. Can you believe somebody comes up to me and goes, because he knew that we were looking for something and he had found my phone and he brought it to me. The reward I gave that guy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we didn't do anything. That's my lost phone story. So here's a hot tip that came out of my lost phone experience. When you go to a place where you have your clothes on, it's kind of dark, there's a lot of people going around and they're crammed together in small spaces. You need to make sure that your valuables are safe and the best way of doing that is having pants with pockets that have zippers. It's gonna take a lot more work for somebody to undo the zipper and reach in and steal your stuff. Um, and also, while you're crouching down and moving around, nothing is gonna fall out of your pockets. Okay, back to boy bearing. So these corridors, off of the corridors, there's like these cubicle rooms. It's not like a bathhouse. You're not gonna find uh, a bed so much. You're not gonna find lockers. You can't rent these out. These are just available rooms for people to use. They come, they go, some have doors, some don't. It's not really comfortable in the sense that, like I said, there's not gonna be a bed. You're not gonna be able to sort of lie down, make yourself at home, kick off your shoes <laughs> and stuff. Sometimes there will be a, like a little bench or like a little seat kind of area. Uh, but some of the rooms are just like rooms. It's just walls that they've thrown up to be like, here you go, there's a little bit of privacy for you. Uh, it's more utilitarian, that's a good word. <laughs> and then there's more like open areas where you know you go around, you turn the corner and then it opens up, there's a little room, little benches. So it's really up to you when you're there. You can find one person, you know, if you're like more the one-on-one -on -one type of kind of person, you can find one person, you can take him to a little cubby cubicle and shut the door and have actually, you can have privacy. Or if you're more exhibitionist or voyeuristic, obviously that's there for you too because there's lots of open spaces and benches for you to perform on. So that's basically the space. But let's talk about the clientele of Boyberry. The clientele age-wise, I would say 20s to 40s, 50s, a lot of Latin men, obviously. This is their hometown, they're on their home turf. But with Madrid being such a popular tourist destination, I saw everything. There was a lot of Europeans, English, French. I heard lots of different languages being spoken. So you can find a lot of different, it's a really a fun international feeling when you're there. Okay, so let's go through some of the pros and cons of Boyberry. One of the biggest pros is the location. Location is so important. If you need to travel really far to get to a place or something, or it's inaccessible, then what's the point? Madrid is a huge city, but Boyberry is located right off of La Gran Vía and right next to Shweca, which makes it easily accessible. One thing I super appreciated about Boyberry was the website, which I'm going to link in the description below. Check out the website. It's sexy, it's cute, it's fun. It has all the information that you need, which for me was lacking in some of the other places that I went to, namely sauna cruising in Colombia, 
where they didn't have a big social presence. And, for, and another pro would be the hours that it's open. It's open late, which as we saw with other bathhouses, they tend to close earlier. Um, but Boyberry was open light because you want that. I mean, you go to the bar, you get drunk, you're horny, you go to Boyberry. Like, it needs to be open late. So that was definitely a pro. Okay, some of the cons. It's better if you're a certain type of person to go to a place like Boyberry. So it, this is not a con against Boyberry, but it's a con against maybe places like this. You really need to be a little bit more of an exhibitionist and a little bit more aggressive to have good results at a place like Boyberry. Boyberry. I would say one con uh, would be, and this is just personal to me, Boyberry could use a little bit more styling. Like I mentioned, it's very utilitarian. It's bare bones. It gets the job done for sure. But for me, tweak the lighting, the materials, just a couple little things. I, I don't need like Egyptian cotton sheets, gold plated anything, but just a little bit more styling. Actually, the website is so cute um, and so styled in a specific way that I, I feel like they could take that and then bring it to the actual location itself. So I'm gonna give Boyberry a very healthy four out of five eggplants. Congratulations, Boyberry. I had a really fun time. Uh, like I said, the staff were super friendly, the guys were hot, and Boyberry, much like any other sex club or sauna, has do's and don'ts. So to hear about those do's and don'ts, watch this video right here. And I will see you in the next video. Mwah!